The first launch of the Starship Super Heavy was both a success and a failure. On the one hand, the rocket exceeded Elon Musk's expectations by easily ascending into the sky without an explosion. However, on the other hand, the launch caused significant damage to the launch pad, which could have been the obstacle that Elon was apprehensive about when it came to the rocket's takeoff. Many have expressed the destruction caused by the Starship Super Heavy's inaugural launch is inconsequential. It was merely a trial to validate the rocket can successfully lift off. Nevertheless, if they intend to approach their ultimate objectives, it's imperative that a robust launch pad is established to support the equivalent of two Saturn V rockets operating frequently, perhaps with intervals of days or less, without incurring any significant harm. As a result, SpaceX is upgrading everything on the Starbase launch pad for future missions. So let's talk about it right now in this episode of Alpha Tech. Elon Musk's SpaceX launched the fully stacked Starship for the first time a little over two weeks ago, and the nearly 400-foot-tall vehicle flew for more than three minutes, achieving several milestones for a rocket of unprecedented scale. Starship also lost multiple engines during the launch, caused severe damage to the ground infrastructure, and ultimately failed to reach space after the rocket began to tumble and was intentionally destroyed in the air. Soon after the launch, SpaceX began the process of cleaning up the launch pad and assessing the damage to the infrastructure. This week, the team begins excavating the dirt and concrete beneath the orbital launch mount to make room for the new water-cooled steel plate that will be used. Elon Musk recently explained this in great detail. We're going to be putting down a lot of steel. We were we're going to be putting down a, a very strong steel sandwich that is basically a water jacketed sandwich. That's two layers of very thick plate steel that that are also sort of perforated on the upper side, so that you, you have what is basically a, a massive, super strong steel shower head pointing up. These updated designs by Ryan Hansen Space offer a glimpse of what the steel plate with a shower head design might look like when it's finished. At this stage, it's uncertain how many holes the steel plate will have or their size. Water under pressure will enter six compartments and exit through openings in the upper surface. The water layer will absorb the energy generated by the 33 Raptor engines and ensure the launch pad can be reused quickly. Precise water placement is essential for achieving this goal. Well, we want to thank Ryan Hansen for these nice renders. This SpaceX approach should reduce damage to the launch site and eliminate the propagation of concrete bits and dust that were observed during the initial test flight last month. I mean, the, the debris is uh, really just basically sand and, and rock, so it's not like, no, not, not toxic at all or anything. It's just, uh, it's like a sandstorm essentially, basically a human-made sandstorm. But we don't, we don't want to do that again. The orbital launch mount's also undergoing intense maintenance. We've seen a new doorway cut out in OLM, new stairs, scaffolding, interior work, and OLM foundation work. According to SpaceX criteria, OLM will only be repaired, not replaced. However, SpaceX will also replace damaged tank farm tanks at the pad that were already set to be swapped out with vacuum jacketed versions. We're going with more of the vacuum jacketed kind of giant hot dog looking tanks as opposed to the va vacuum jacketed giant hot dog tanks. Those are in the best shape and those are what we want anyway. So some of the tanks will be yeah, pr probably removing and replacing uh, with the hot dog tanks. The tower itself is in good shape. Uh, we see no serious. Meanwhile, the 500 foot tall tower luckily is in good shape with no meaningful damage, even though it was struck by some pretty big chunks of concrete. Elon Musk expects SpaceX to spend about $2 billion on its Starship rocket development this year as the company pushes to build on its first launch earlier last month. Musk said previously that Starship will cost the company between $5 and $10 billion to develop, and he estimated that Starlink's total cost will be about $10 billion. That network, according to SpaceX President Gwen Shotwell, is likely to be cash flow positive this year, but that's not the same as a return on investment particularly as SpaceX will probably need to start replacing its earliest satellites in orbit in 2025 as they approach the end of their useful lives. In 2021, Elon Musk famously warned SpaceX employees that unless Starship could begin regular flights in 2022 to launch new, larger Starlink satellites, the company might go bankrupt. 
While warnings of financial calamity are frequent Musk motivational tools, there's reasons to believe he was serious about those issues, if not the timeline. Starlink's economics hinge on wringing as much value as possible from each spacecraft in orbit by maximizing their user base below and the efficiency of their spacecraft. However, reports of congestion and throttling from areas in the U.S. with large numbers of users, combined with the company's plans to more than double the size of each satellite, suggest this depends on using Starship to launch these more powerful spacecraft. What Elon was saying last year is that we can't run a profitable Starlink business unless we really upsize our satellites, our power, our capability, and Starship is the key to getting it. That according to Chris Quilty, a space market analyst. The test flight of the vehicle last month, about a year after Musk first expected it to occur, wasn't an obvious setback for the engineering program despite that fiery ending. SpaceX's development strategy has always been about building and testing many actual pieces of hardware, which leads to more dramatic failures, but its engineers say faster progress toward a working vehicle. But building a new rocket, particularly one as complex and powerful as Starship, is never a linear process. And delays can be costly to a company with a large workforce like SpaceX. Musk compared the Starship program to Soviet efforts building the N-1 moon rocket back in the 60s, a massive vehicle intended to compete with the U.S. Saturn V. The vehicle was ultimately canceled after four failed launch attempts. How much margin is built into the Starship schedule? Starship could face more delays, if not the technical variety, than from concerns about the environmental impact of the launch from SpaceX's facility near Boca Chica, Texas. The Federal Aviation Administration approved the launch based on data that didn't match the actual launch conditions and without infrastructure to protect the launch pad. Now, local environmental groups have brought a lawsuit against the FAA for approving the launch. If SpaceX returns to the public market this year amid concerns about a recession, it may face the toughest fundraising environment since Musk pulled $20 million from Founders Fund in 2008 to barely launch the company's first rocket. The problem they now have is that they have data that an investor can look at. Martin, the investment banker, has said, Do the math and start to think about applying market multiples. You've got to squint pretty hard to get $137 billion in value. How much can you grow? Still, Quilty points out that SpaceX's dominant position in the space sector, particularly its current near-monopoly on U.S. human spaceflight and flying national security missions for the U.S. government, make it difficult to bet against Musk pulling in that new capital. If money managers believe it would be worth a trillion, then $137 billion makes sense, Quilty said. And that about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section below. Everyone's support motivates us to create more quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.